What is going on, Charles Botenston here. We are gonna be talking about, and obviously, as you guys know, the content is gonna be getting a lot better. We're, the thumbnails is gonna be getting better. We're gonna be adding a lot more to not only the blog, the personal blog, we're gonna be adding more to the BPI blog, which is my company. And one of the biggest things that I get all the time is about wealth. You know, a lot of people, they are focusing on areas that are not important. You know, one of the biggest areas outside of health that you have to focus on is wealth. There's just a multitude of reasons. Number one is it brings anxiety, all right? Your opportunities decrease. The amount of things that you could do when you're growing a business decreases. The amount of, of freedom that you have decreases. It's always on your mind if you have debt, if you have student debt, if you have card debt, if you have credit card debt, it doesn't matter. If you have a lot of debt, IRS debt, that's always gonna be on your mind. Trust me, I know, because I was in that circumstance. I'm not proclaiming I'm wealthy or anything else. This is just a bunch of fundamental steps that I took that not only took me, excuse me, it's getting me so emotional. It took me out of the area of thinking about it all the time to, okay, it's about once a day or once a week or once a month. In other words, I have to pay my bills, I have freelancers, I have obviously a company and you know rent for not only the office space, but there's just a ton of overhead when you own a, a company. There's so many services, you know whether it's online or in person, photographers, videographers, editors, all these people that you need to pay. So instead of thinking, how am I gonna get out of debt? It's more like, okay, I structure this time and this is where I pay my bills, okay? So so as a business owner, there's probably one of my better videos that I've done. There's three types of business owners. The first one is CEO. That's you going out getting business. COO, which is you not only just maintaining the business, but it's the operation side of, okay, this is me servicing it. And then obviously the CFO, which is all financials and wealth and building. And there's two types. If you're in business, obviously it's building out the financial end of the business. And then you have the personal, which is what's my IRA, what's my 401 Okay, what's my investments, what's my stocks and bonds and things like that, which we're gonna be getting into. So first of all, let's just go down. There's gonna be, I was gonna break it down to two parts, but I think we'll be able to bang it out in one. So number one is you have a financial blueprint. All right, the financial blueprint means that you're brought up a certain way. It, and the, everyone's is different. You know, it, everyone's is even different between siblings. So in other words, my brother's financial blueprint, my sister's financial blueprint, and my financial blueprint are completely different because we are brought up by our parents in a different way, in a different era, at a different time. My brother's 10 years older, they treated him differently. You know, my brother worked his ass off, my sister worked her ass off, and I did too. So money wasn't one of those things that was given to us at any time. You know, I had to pay for half of college, my sister had to pay for half of college, my brother had to pay for all of college, and you know, even just luxuries, the first time I was on a plane was age 13. The second time it was 18. My first real cell phone was at 19, I think. So, and by the way, that was at a different time. So it's not like cell phones are weren't as prevalent and things like that. But what you have to understand is, you know, if you came from a very well off family and you don't have a lot of money right now, your temperature, in other words, your wealth temperature is a lot higher because you're used to a certain amount of say luxuries, okay? In other words, this is the best way to think about it. If someone, say Jeff Bezos loses everything, Bill Gates loses everything, or even people that we know, Gary Vaynerchuk loses everything, you know, they're gonna be able to build that back up because they understand or they're used to a certain level of wealth or a certain level of making money for their business, okay? So you have to go back and you have to go back and you have to say, am I a spender? Am I a saver? Am I someone that likes to show off money? Am I someone that doesn't really like money, so I give it away? You know, people that are religious don't really like money, so they give it away. Then there's people that need to feel better about themselves, so they buy a bunch of shit that doesn't really matter. Cars, jewelry, vacations, clothes, cell phones, you know, spending money at dinner, things like that. And you have to really, this is literally the baseline of making wealth because there's so many people, Mike Tyson, Kurt Schilling, these people made hundreds of millions of dollars over the course of their life. There's, you hear it all the time, all these famous people that made tons of money and then they just went broke. You know, who's the recent guy that, that killed himself? You know, they said his net worth was only about 30 million or something like that. And it's like, this guy was in his 50s or 60s or something like that. He built up wealth, he was globally known. And it's amazing because when you're not used to having that much money, you actually push it away. You get it, 
but then you push it away by spending money or by just stupid things. You know, Mayweather is another example, or Conor McGregor, yes, they have a ton of money, but they're just giving it away because their financial blueprint was, I came from nothing and I built this up. Mike Tyson, I came from nothing, I built this up, and then they, they're just not used to it, so they just give it away. That's the number one thing that you have to understand. And the easiest way to get there is, how was I growing up? What was the conversation around money with my parents, with my friends, with my siblings, within my own mind? Did I have to work for it? Did I not have to work for it? And, and then obviously later on, you get to your habits. You know, do you save? Do you spend? What do you do with it? Do you invest it? Do you like money? Do you like spending money? Do you like talking about money? Things like that. So that's the first one. Number two is that you have to have a plan, okay? This is the biggest thing that I finally, probably in the last two years, I've wrapped my head around is that I need a financial plan. So the financial plan, obviously in business, is a little bit different than it is in personal. So personal, the financial plan is, what are you actually planning for? Are you in a relationship to buy a ring, to plan a wedding? Are you gonna have a kid? Are you looking to buy a house? You know, that's a totally different financial plan than someone that's single, like myself, that's looking to just build out wealth creation for generational wealth, and it starts now. You know, I'm 32, 33, I think I'm 33. I forgot, I don't even care, you know, age is a number. But a lot of people freak out on, the, on their age. And then for the business, this is obviously, this could be a totally separate conversation, but for my business, I wanna have at least a operating amount of reserves for at least six months. Right now I'm probably pushing eight or nine. I wanna get it to 12, okay? So before you start a business, you wanna have at least 12 months of operating reserves. You know, and, and you base that on what are my expenses, personal, and what are my business expenses, and then you add that together, and then you actually add on top of that because it's way more expensive than you think, and business doesn't come flying in just because you put a shingle out on your on your house, okay, saying for sale or now offering the service. So the long term is bigger than the short term. The long term is when a check comes in, what do I do with it, okay? I say I get $100. Of that $100, obviously it depends on the state, but say 40% goes to taxes. Okay, now I'm left with 60%. From that 60%, does 10% go towards a uh, freedom fund? As a couple of people, I think Tony Robbins says it. 10% goes to reserves, uh, in other words, rainy day. 10% goes to actual expenses, and then the rest goes to your business or whatever else. You have to understand when you get money, what do you do with it? You know, And if you just get money and then you have no plan, which I did for the entirety of my life, I never had any savings. I always was, I had more month than paycheck, all right? Instead of more paycheck than the month, all right? Number three, the market, spending money, myself, you, are, you are the only one that actually cares, okay? I, I actually wrote down, the principles do not care about your feelings, okay? It doesn't matter if you're having a bad day, if you spend, overspend, like perfect example yesterday, I went on Amazon, I was kind of having a shitty day, and I just ordered way too much money, way too many clothes, and I spent way too much money on, on cold weather gear for cycling. I didn't need to do that, okay? That's stupid spending. And it's gonna come in the mail, and I'm gonna use it in my justification, which is, going back to number one, is what's my financial blueprint? When I spend money, do I justify and say, oh, it's to make me feel better, or oh, it's just, it, it's for my spouse, or my girlfriend, or for my business. If you overspend and there's no plan behind it, or there's no ROI, or even better, which is ROT, return on time, then it doesn't matter. You spending money, there, there's that, that's objective. All right, your feelings don't care about. In regards to the stock market, you know, I wrote this down as well, is that you don't play the stock market, okay? The stock market just goes, it is, all right? And we'll talk about where to invest and things like that. In other words, a lot of people say, I wanna play the stock market, it's not gambling, okay? I wrote down here as well, is that when, when you actually think you're playing, you're getting played. Because 99% of the investors, it's all about behavior. It's all about timing, it's all about the temperature of the marketplace, and unless you're really brilliant, there's no point in just putting money into the marketplace. I heard Bitcoin is hot, and then you, you put in your money, and all those people that rode it to the wave, they sold it to you, they made a ton of money, and now you're stuck at the top, all right? This is all about objectively looking at things, objectively saying, listen, I get a paycheck, what happens, okay? Well, my kid needs this, or my wife needs this, or my... I need this, I really need a suit. Can you go with the suit that you already have? Do you really need that really nice apartment? Here's a story. So I lived in Hell's Kitchen, so Hell's Kitchen in New York City is a 
kind of touristy area on the west side, and it's it's known as Midtown West. And I was living with roommates, fifth floor walk up, four people, and it was I was like, listen, when I come home, I just don't want to talk to anyone because I'm talking to the camera, I'm talking to clients, I'm I'm all over the place. And one of the biggest things that I've noticed is that I kind of need that time by myself. So I justified going out and getting my own place. So I got my own place and I was like, I want to go downtown, all right? So this is interesting, is that I couldn't afford the apartment that I first uh, rented. And ironically enough, I started making more money because I rented that apartment. Not a smart idea, don't recommend it, but I, I rented an apartment I couldn't afford and then I started making more money because I said, oh shit, I gotta pay for this thing. Then I justified a much bigger apartment and I shouldn't even put it in quotes, it was probably about 70% more expensive and I said, well, I wanna entertain people, I wanna have people over here, I really want outdoor space, I love outdoor space, it's a duplex, it's in a better area downtown and I justified it by spending 70% more money yet my business was actually lacking the amount of money that it needed to expand to market, to bring on freelancers, to bring on people to actually edit this video and things like that, all right? So when I, when I did that, I then rode back and actually got a smaller apartment, spending less, putting more money into my business. So see where you're trying to justify spending more money. I tried to justify it by, well, I'm gonna be entertaining. And then when I entertain, I spend hundreds of dollars on alcohol and food and partying and things like that. Just wasn't worth it, all right? We'll do, Ah, screw it, the 72 hour rule, all right? So this is something that is, I forgot what book this was in, but 72 hour rule, highly recommend uh, you actually employ this. This is something that I wish I did yesterday, but I've actually done in the past. So in other words, 72 hour rule is you wanna buy something, so then you go on Amazon, it's so easy to buy it, it's like three clicks and then it's already bought, and then two days later, it's sitting on your doorstep, sometimes that day, sometimes the next day, all right? The 72, 72 hour rule is you wait 72 hours, you put in your shopping cart, you revisit it in 72 hours, do you really still wanna buy it? Do you really need those jeans? Do you really need that new suit? Do you really need that apartment? 72 hour rule, usually I'm very impulsive, and now I've actually come back and I said, do I actually need this? What's my return on investment? What's my return when I actually buy this? How long is it gonna take? What is that actual dollar amount? What's that percentage amount? 72 hour rule, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of things in my wish list on Amazon that I don't need. I used to just overspend on books, and now I'm like, I don't need all these books. I have so many I haven't even read, so many I haven't even listened to on Audible. There's no point in actually investing more money. So we're gonna do uh, part two, tomorrow and then we're actually going to be going into a couple other more practical steps on investing so five six and seven is going to be tomorrow have an amazing day if this is new your first time if i don't know what i just tried to say if you're new to the channel like share subscribe obviously you know what to do and if you guys have any questions about things that you want me to cover obviously send it over we have one actually uh, it was an instagram question from instagram message question from Chris, so we're gonna get into that next week. Have an amazing day, enjoy your, well, I don't know whenever you're gonna see this. Take it in, take care.